slides we have to present to see how best we can understand the impact of coronavirus disease uh, which break out 2019 that's on short notation connotation COVID-19 its impact to the sustainable development goal one no poverty first um, when from an introductory point of view when we talk of no poverty here it it comes to the mind of someone that's maybe an opposite direction or in an alternative manner of totally not being poor or to an extent of being a rich person but in this contextual meaning of no poverty here we're trying to look at how each and every person in the world cut across being a woman a man boys girls children persons with person with disability totally and people who are living in extreme poverty to totally come out of poverty not to totally be rich like attaining the level of having thousands of dollars or millions of dollars but to live a, a middle income life or a life which can make you what acquire your basic needs and facilities so we are looking at uh, we we are looking at sustainable development group one Sustainable development. Sustainable development goal one. Uh, why is SDG goal one is important? No poverty. We say here ending poverty is all in all forms. I'm getting an echo. Please, can everyone mute your mic? Yeah, go back, go back, go back, go back. Please mute your mic. If everyone mute their mic, please. Okay. So no poverty. No poverty here we totally talk of this context of eradicating poverty for all people everywhere current measures as people living on less than 1.25 dollars a day well in most of african countries you exchange the exchange rate at least of 1.25 dollars to live for a day attaining a basic meal. Um, when you do an exchange rate economically, at least it can purchase something that one can feed with the what, the immediate family and sustain for the day long, which you can you 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 feel totally okay and all right to what to go to sleep and see the other day. So we say why SDG goal one is important here. And, if, and ending poverty in all its forms everywhere from forms the first goal of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. It calls for ensuring social protection, enhancing access to basic services, and building resilience against impact of natural disasters which can cause severe damage to people's resources and lives. So to talk more from this quick summary to see why this thing is important, um, preventing the disconnection 
of COVID-19 to what? To sustainable development goals, to be precise, goal one. Very much important in short a way that whenever um, we want to what? Achieve sustainable development goals as we have a time period of uh, 10 to almost a decade, 10 to 15 years to achieve it, we are thinking of it has a long period of time to achieve it, but it's not too long. Um, but before this time already, the United Nations have already uh, put out modalities to at least just wipe out any emerging challenge like COVID-19, which is a disaster. And COVID-19, it's a very great disaster that prevents the attaining of what? of sustainable development goal one, no poverty. So if we look, all, look at all things that surround um, the prevention of attaining the achievement of sustainable development goal one, of what? Ensuring social protection of every one now, which if we look at the whole wide world, no citizen of the globe is feeling protected because every government and state the whole wide world is in emergency so during emergency period we are of what we are in a great great dis disorder of a normal operation we cannot what normally enhance access to basic services yes unless otherwise now we are fighting an emergency cause and a cause which we think we can all what work together from each and every angle from each and every profession and from each and every partner in the world to connect and work as one sometimes we can be able to build resilience against the impact of the natural disaster which is what we can um, specifically mentioned here that is COVID-19, which caused severe, it, which is causing severe damage as of present to what? To resources and lives of what? Of every global citizen. Um, COVID-19, the coronavirus world cases confirmed 5.808 million recovered, 1.94 million dead, 332K as of May 21st, 2020. So when we, we totally look at the background of COVID-19, now we we'll say coronavirus disease is caused by a coronavirus called SARS. That is severe acute respiratory syndrome of COVID-2. This is caused from what? This virus that results to coronavirus 2, which uh, before this time, there were some related um, sicknesses, which are some of uh, the few to, to mention, the mass that the Middle East resp respiratory uh, syndrome, which has been affecting and killing some people in the Middle East. But the worst of it, SARS form results to COVID-2, which is the much more dangerous from a health perspective, public health perspective. Older adults and people who have severe underlying medical conditions like heart or lung diseases or diabetes seem to be a higher risk for developing more serious complication from COVID-19 illness. The virus that causes COVID-19 is spreading very easily and what sustainably between people. Information from ongoing COVID-19 pandemic suggests that this virus is spreading more efficiently than influenza, but not as efficiently as measles, which is highly contagious. So we can look the danger which Konoa virus can easily cause, uh, which is compared to other viruses, but unlike to what? To Mizu, which um, the World Health Organization 
has helped immensely to at least um, treat it in the whole wide world, which is no longer a threat. But Konoha virus disease is also dangerous close to what? To measles. So it is, it is thought to spread mainly from person to person, mainly through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. When an infected person coughs or sneezes. So this is the common medium of transmission of COVID-19. That's why more modalities are in place using what? Face masks, social distancing, and the likes of preventing um, uh, having larger crowds and the likes because of what? The quick means at which the virus do transfer through what? Coughing or what? When you cough or sneeze. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby by possible, by possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Spread is more likely when people are in close contact with one another within six feet. So reducing a little distance from six feet, being close to any infected person which who or who never protects oneself from wearing what's a face mask or never what imploring the what the public health habit of um, putting the, 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 the elbow close to the mouth and cough or sneeze, we can easily transmit it to a close by contact or, or a nearby person in what? In crowded places, in office, in offices, and most other places where we prevent having um, social distance. Spread is more likely when people are close. It may be possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth. So this is one clear way in which the virus do transmit. Um, when you touch a surface, like in walkways, in, um, in long stairs, in tables and doors, Whenever an infected person who has contacted the disease sneeze, use the, the hand and touch any of his or her fluid, then drop it on that surface. Any contact touching such what surfaces will be liable to what to get infected. So. It may be possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface of what of an infected person droplet. This is not thought to what to be the main way the virus spreads, but we but we are still um, learning more about this virus. So, like it's one of um, we cannot continue to emphasize that it is the, the the most possible means of transmission. But much more clearly, it's the easiest way um, in which we can get infected or in which we can get contacted with the virus. The impact of COVID-19 on SDG Goal 1. COVID-19 fallout could push half a billion people into poverty in developing countries, according to new research published by United Nations University World Institute for Development Economics Research. COVID-19 is taking its toll on the world, causing death, illness, and economic despair. But how is the deadly virus impacting global poverty? So we, we um, previous research can prove to us that, can tell us that um, during the 90s, um, the Poverty level of people, 1990, has totally been cut down. And an extent to 2013, um, it has reached to a level wherein the UN has succeeded in reducing the what? 
the increased poverty rate, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. So if we are expecting another word, increase in poverty, people to slip back from the normal level at which we've worked, we've succeeded in fighting and reducing the poverty level of people or citizens of the world, especially Sub-Saharan African and Southern Asian, we are slipping back. What is causing it? Now, Ebola previously has caused another danger, just 2016 to 2017. The poverty rate also increases. And now, 2000 and what? And 2020, we've had, we've got another heavily heated uh, virus, which is COVID-19. So 2020, 21 to 23, we are also expecting a rapid what fall in the what in the attainment of the no poverty rate, which we are fighting to attain 2030, which we already which we started since 2016 to at least fought. We said COVID-19 is pushing about 40 to 60 million people into extreme poverty, with the best estimates being 49 million. Some forecasts reveal that COVID-19 is likely to cause the first increase in global poverty since 1998, when the Asian financial crisis hit. With the new forecasts, global poverty, the share of world's population living on less than 1.90 per day. Like the, 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 the 1.90 dollars per day um, average or middle income life, which people can what can use to, to live certain kind of life to attain a, a condition of well-being. Uh, before this time, it was $1. And we see the improvement we made after 2015, 16, 17. It's what? It's rated to $1.9 a day for each and every world citizen averagely living poverty life to attain $1.9 per day. We've attained this. So what are we expecting in the next years to come, on the next few months to come after Ebola highly heated during uh, we had lockdowns on March 2020 all over the world. So we say uh, $1.9 per day is projected to increase from 8.2% in 2019 to 8.6% in 2020, or from 632 million people to 665 million people. We see the rate at which the percentage increased and what the level average number of what of the world population is what is still slipping, slipping down to what to go back to the previous poverty rates they are living. Compare this with the projected deadline from 8.1% to 7.8% over the same time period using the previous World Economic Outlook forecast. This slight change from 8.2 to 8.1% for 2019 happens because the reversed growth forecast also changed for non-COVID reasons for some countries. We know some countries, we are in a well-preparedness stage, you know, since the heat of COVID, uh, of, of uh, Ebola virus disease, some countries, they we are well prepared despite the challenge which um, coronavirus brought, that no well prepared country can, st can stand on. You cannot stand against coronavirus disease heat because it came from a different angle. But some countries um, uh, fought very hard um, decided to tackle some other challenges and some other um, areas of, uh, of uh, sustainable development goal, which they are, they, they are gradually attaining, making the percentage to at least drop a little bit for 2019. 
no neglecting the heat which your coronavirus disease made. Taking this into account, it means the COVID-19 is driving a change in our 2020 estimates of what? Global poverty rates of 0.7% points. 0.8, 0.6% to 8.2%. 7.2, 7 7.8% to 8.1%. Another way to put this is that the estimates suggest that COVID-19 will push 49 million people into extreme poverty in 2020. So we should be very careful and scared. When we get scared over such a, 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 an increase in poverty figure, um, we have to build resilience. We have to fight very hard as young people, as ambassadors, based on what the ideas we've got, based on the institutional and policy policies we've we've got, and organizational development, based on our advocacy to at least not to allow such figures stand or such figures stand or an increase continue. 23 million of people, of the people pushed into poverty are projected to be in Sub-Saharan Africa. Though Sub-Saharan Africa so far has been hit relatively less by the virus from a health perspective, projections suggested, suggest that it will be the region hit hardest in terms of increased extreme poverty. You know, Sub-Saharan Africa, we are, we are fighting the aftermath which uh, corona so Ebola virus disease left. Now, we haven't even reached in any stage of achieving the, what, the, 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 foot, the negative footprint which Ebola virus disease left. Now we had another outbreak. Even we never recorded the highest number of deaths but unlike we are observing the international rules and policies to at least prevent the total spread. And to an extent, most other Sub-Saharan African also, we are heated and are currently suffering the pandemic. So at the country level, the three countries with the largest change in the number of poor are estimated to be India. In Asia, 12 million, Nigeria, Western Africa, 5 million, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, Central is 2 million. Countries such as Indonesia, South Africa, and China are also forecasted to have more than 1 million people pushed into extreme poverty as an, a consequence of COVID-19. So these are all um, very large countries in the whole wide world. You can compare the population of India, Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo, having this kind of population heated with coronavirus disease. At least, you know, you have um, like, I'm not too good at mathematics or economics to estimate, but a large number of population of the world are found in, in these countries, India and Nigeria. So when such number of people are heated with coronavirus disease, it has a great, great negative impact on the lives of these people and other um, countries in the whole wide world, especially the neighboring and surrounding countries. When looking at the impact of the pandemic on higher poverty lines, for example, the number of people living on less than $3.2 or $5.50 per dollars per day, more than 100 million people will be pushed into poverty. Yeah, just think of the number of uh, the, 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 kind, uh, the kind of life uh, people living from $3.2 to $5.50. At least they are living a middle income life which they, they are above poverty line. So there is also another challenge. Coronavirus continue to hit, we drop a population of these people already attained 
a middle income of above the poverty line down to poverty. So we have a great um, fight to fight. Millions of these people will be pushed back into poverty. Latin America and Caribbean, East Asia and Pacific and the Middle East and North Africa are all expected to have at least 10 million more people living on less than $5.5 per day. Just remember and just imagine all these countries, most have attained a middle income life. You know, most people living in this country are living above the poverty line. So coronavirus has posed more threat for people already living a middle income life to come back to poverty line, below the poverty line. So we have a great impact to give to the fight against coronavirus as ambassadors. Questions about the future after COVID-19, that the post period of COVID-19 now. COVID-19 will likely impact countries, inequalities differently. You know, it based on the way it hits countries and the preparedness of, of most of the countries in the world before coronavirus hit it. So the inequalities it can it may cost can be very, uh, 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 can be of different. You know, it can be varied from one country to another, from economic strength of certain country to another from the previous preparedness of one country to another before the, the Ebola virus, the coronavirus disease hit it. So there will be a very great variance based on preparedness, based on reserves, based on what? Development uh, level at which certain countries index had attained before coronavirus disease. So few questions are asked here. So what will happen if growth in all countries we have one percent point lower or higher than the world economic outlook projection? So what do we think will happen economically on growth basis? And what will happen if COVID-19 changes inequality in countries? So maybe we can expect the unexpected. Countries might have prepared the most efficient way or the most modern way, you know. We, we see countries like Italy, United States of America, India, and other countries. You know, if you can look at their medical system, their public health system, they are much more developed than any other countries in the world. But they were highly heated by coronavirus disease. Businesses fell down. You know, people we are prevented, a lot of lockdown took place. Trans trade of business with partners and what professionals and services, we are all caught in. So we are expecting the unexpected. We know that low income workers are more likely to lose their jobs as a result of COVID-19 from an economic point of view. So we know most Africans, especially uh, Western Africa to be precise, and other poor countries in the world are mostly dependent. They are mostly dependent on economic and social life, you know? So when maybe these bigger countries and these super world power countries have been hit, you know, this problem of going deep down below the poverty line also will continue. But what does this simply imply for the poor in sub-Saharan Africa, many of whom are subsistence farmers? So it has a very great negative impact it can, it, it's going to cost. And what about the many, it asks a lot of questions. The peasant farmers, the what? The petit traders, like the small scale traders and business people, the peasants, and what about many emergency packages countries have implemented to assist most vulnerable households? Can they be sustained? And what about the decline in wealth from the fall in the stock market, which is likely to hit the well of most, you know? 
most of which are sub-Saharan Africa. We import, we import most of our commodities. We import our rice, our clothes, our basic amenities. Most we import from developed countries. So having a fall in stock market, we will be expecting a great danger. But we are here to what? Listen the threat it poses and find better solution towards this. We are resilient. We have the expertise. We have the concept and policies to at least understand this and the resources can be made available to fight against this based on our strategies. So we can stop the inevitable. So like the boast I'm making here, you know, we can stop the inevitable. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, the SDGs will help us build back better. You know, the, the strategies, the plans, and the what, the concepts that have been put in place by the United Nations before this time on what, on for unforeseen disasters and danger that we pose a lot of threats to achieve the what, to achieve uh, the sustainable development goal will be back on the table, on the floor, in the hands and in the heads of a lot of expertise and in the what, in parliament of a lot of governments in the whole world to at least fight strongly to conquer and achieve developments, to achieve the sustainable development goals come 2030 or before. That will be very great plus to, to, the, to the global citizen and to ambassadors working towards the achievement of the sustainable development goals. We say when changing the growth and inequality assumptions, the projections suggest global poverty estimates in the range of 8.4% and 8.8%. That's a gap of 4% difference. Or in other words, that the number of people pushed into extreme poverty will be roughly between 40 to 60 million. In the more pessimistic scenarios, global poverty in 2020 will be close to the level in 2017. You know, 2017 was a time already um, we are fighting on the post period of Ebola and we were making some gains. We were making some gains globally to at least recover. It was the recovering process. So like we have slipped down back to 2017 um, rates of attaining global poverty, uh, 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 global development on what? On, on eradicating poverty. Meaning that world's progress in eliminating extreme poverty will be set back by three years. The SDGs with their universal scope interlinked so you see, you cannot, you cannot talk of poverty um, uh, failing to know that to, to, to eradicate poverty or moving the extremely poor individual from the situation of poverty can be felt all alone. That's looking at a one focus. You, you should consider the 17 development goals, the other 16 development goals. You should consider them all. Most especially, you should think of what? Health, good health and sanitation. You must think of access to education. You must think of having a good food, clean energy, fighting to have what? Gender equality, you know, sustaining life on land and in water. So all these goals and more, we have to inculcate them. You cannot fight a single fight you, you should enhance all the 16 development goals with proper way of what? Of fighting poverty. So we say um, the SDG encourage investments in critical public goods. In critical public goods, minimum level of social, minimum level of social 
minimum level of social health care and the provision the sdg encourage investment in critical public good like minimum level of social protection social protection and the provision of services clean water and education which help to build resilience and enhance the mechanisms people have to cope with the immediate and longer term impact of stock Chrisman, check your mic. We're no longer hearing you. At least I'm not hearing you. So please check your mic. Have we lost him? Okay, I think he dropped. It could be the connection. Um, Let's see, I'll give him a few minutes to see if he comes back. I'm still on my errands, running my errands out. Um, I really enjoyed his presentation. I know he's not finished yet, but I definitely want to know if anyone has any questions um, that they could throw out while we wait for him to come back and finish his presentation. If you have any questions, just unmute yourself and feel free to, to talk. As you guys see, I'm at the bank. <laughs> Had some errands to run today. So, if anyone has any questions, you have to unmute yourself. I think his network dropped. Anyone, any takers, any questions? Just unmute yourself. Sorry for the quick break. Lady oh, Usman, he's back. Okay, I'll go ahead. So you're yeah. back You to finish yeah, your presentation. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Still can't hear you. I'm not sure if your uh, mic is working. Yeah, we cannot stop the inevitable. Okay, there you go. I can hear you now. The most recent, um, amid the coronavirus pandemic, the SDG will help us build back better. You know, this is according to Nana Akuro uh, Ado Akufo, the president of uh, the United, uh, uh, Ghana, and also uh, a secretary on the UN develop, uh, Sustainable Development Advocates. Uh, the most recent estimate indicates that some 3 billion people are without basic hand washing facilities. And what? At home and 4 billion people lack any kind of social protection. You know, uh, this type of uh, data we are having is a uh, the type of amenities which people are really requiring. Because I've been some quarantine homes, even here in Sierra Leone, people are not having basic hand washing facilities in already quarantine people that have what, that have traced to have been contact with coronavirus infected people, never do have what, hand washing facilities. Not to say every every home in the country and some other African countries. This is a very great challenge and it poses more threats. So the total world population that is focused
they want in able to take measures to reduce their exposure to the disease and have the means to cope and recover because the disease is found to be having no treatment. But the necessary precautions and the valuable measures which we can employ can prevent the, what, the, the, the virus from, from getting spread all over um, the, the world. You know, uh, preventing an individual from contacting coronavirus disease, you must have saved a lot, a million lives. So imploring most of the facilities and preventive measures will help us fight against the disease. And remember, people getting infected is the more we go into poverty. So you see how related coronavirus disease to poverty? If anything, the SDG will become more important in the days and months ahead. So SDG ambassadors and policymakers and planners has a, have a lot of work to do because in the next month, we, are mid, we will be expecting more scattered situation which, we've been, which we, we, had been, we had already what started putting in place will be another what challenge to put any, everything back into normal we'll be expecting a lot of challenges, a lot of setbacks, and a lot of what? Downstreaming situation. So it's a word to what? To hear from, uh, for the SDGs ambassadors. The goals and targets set in 2015 are precisely the areas where progress needed to be made to build resilience and what? And guard against future crises and where we will need to work to build back after the immediate tragedy subsides. So the challenge for improving people's life after this crisis will be greater than ever because there will be cries. You know, Ebola took a lot of lives, but it has a sect where it affects, you know, but coronavirus disease also took lives and what? set back businesses and a lot more, lot more negative uh, scenarios in the whole wide world. So you can compare the two, coronavirus has what? Has done more danger. So this is the confidence that we all should be going along with. We will overcome, you know, we will overcome and we should be what? We should be very uh, heavily ready to at least to cope the challenge from this moment, continue to do the fight. Working together, we can save lives, restore livelihoods, and bring the global economy back on track. We have what? We have the atmosphere and the platform to do that with all professionalities and what, and what it takes. We will overcome the COVID-19 pandemic only through effective collaboration. We, we cannot work in isolation. We cannot work in separate entities. We, ca we are all going to work as global citizens, as connect interconnected people to at least help bring back our world into normal economic strength, social and very good livelihood of every um, global citizen and our what uh, social livelihoods and communication among scientists, experts, innovators, and policymakers. All professionals in all walks of life have has a role to play. Real time sharing of experience and what insights will be critical in strengthening the science policy society interface though there must be challenges to overcome but we can we will overcome and contribute towards the solution we need sadly this pandemic hits at a time when the sdgs we are gaining track we are gaining traction and a significant number of countries we are making good process progress you know 
like I, I mentioned that previously, that most countries in the world have, have already started making progress on the sustainable development goals in different platforms, in different angles, in different atmosphere. But COVID-19 sets us back. You know, as the world is seized with containing the spread of the virus and addressing its negative impact, the reality is that countries are resetting their priorities and relocating what resources to deal with the pandemic. This certainly is the right thing to do because the priority now is to save lives and we must do so at all costs. You know, governments, country, multinational corporations, you know, uh, humanitarian organizations, we are having a set and focused goal to achieve, you know, but unlike the words, the, inter the, 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 the pandemic breakout of COVID-19, which has diverted every attention of all mentioned institution to what? To put along emergency funds to be fighting COVID-19 because it's the great barrier, it's the great danger. It had been the greatest enemy ever. So now we are focusing on mainly fighting. So this also a word for thoughts, whosoever is thinking fighting COVID-19 cannot make sense. It's high time you, you help fight to stop the continual what, um, danger COVID-19 is posing. That is why we must all support the call by the United Nations to scale up the immediate health response to suppress the transmission of the virus, end the pandemic, and focus on people, particularly the most vulnerable people, include women, youth, low-wage workers, small and medium enterprises, the informal sector, disabled, children. These are the, the, the most vulnerable groups already at risk. So we have to be very vigilant and what? And effective in working with such groups to, ad, to achieve this. So, so far so good. My presentation can take a little period here and see how best we can go forward in question and answers contribution from um, several people who are in this platform tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Osman, for that presentation. I hope you guys can hear me. Are you guys hearing me? Is my mic working? Yes, is everyone hearing me? Are you yeah. guys not hearing me? You're hearing me? Okay, fine. I just want to open the floor for any questions. If anyone has any questions, go ahead. It's your time. I'm going to unmute everyone's mic and everyone will be able to ask questions. So just go ahead. If you have your own, your mic, you can unmute it yourself also. So everyone is on mute now. So if you have any questions, go ahead. Okay, if we don't have any questions, we can wrap it up. Uh, Uzma, you could go ahead and start wrapping up. Yeah. So, you know, this is a, a, a great move, a great fight. We are all going to fight together. And there are more room or platform for every one and individual, you know, poverty. Um, we cannot just say it's the, the, the number one goal but it's the most vulnerable goal which we can look at. Whenever we fight against poverty, I guess we can help. Poverty is a, a facilitating, fighting poverty is a very big facilitating aspect which will help us achieve so many other goals and creating very big impacts, relieving the world from threat of having a lot of poor population, which will further lead 
to high death rate, you know, to higher risk of what? Of violence, high risk of undemocratic system, high risk of protest, and a lot of a lot more in the world. Because people can fight to survive, especially fighting to what? To survive um, above the poverty line. So each and every one of us here has a role to play. You know, as far as you are an ambassador, you can help change lives in your society, you know, in various communities, and even in the country at large. When you touch the lives of your countrymen, I think you've touched the, life, the lives of um, everybody in the world because the world is an interconnected and interrelated place we are all living in. And we have a um, role to play to every one of us. So having the great thoughts to see that poverty is the thing that we must look at to eradicate, you know, we are having a very big fight to fight. You know, I have some kind of social uh, presumption and social focus, which I usually do in my country and uh, the, the, the communities surrounding me. You know, um, we, uh, 10 years back, a decade back, we, we were having a government that was really fighting to eradicate poverty and most of their policies and the likes, we are in line of those of the Millennium Development Goals push into the um, Sustainable Development Goals. And um, the outbreak of Ebola virus disease took us back. You know, for example, people in our country had been already getting transformed by using from um, very dangerous uh, energy like coal and wood for cooking, for preparing food. You know, people we are transforming already to at least attain gas cooks, cookers, and uh, cooking through electricity. But as soon as Ebola virus disease hit, you know, we start having climatic problems also. People go to the forest, to the bush. They cut down a lot of food to burn coal, charcoal, and use for also um, unsafe energy for cooking and the likes. You know, so the heat of coronavirus will take us back to such situation, and it has it has already been manifested as for now. Most places in Africa and Sierra Leone here, to be precise. So we have a lot more to do as of now when we are aware of what the dangers and the threats which coronavirus has imposed for us to go back where we are coming from. You know, we have to try our best to contribute to the lives to, of the extreme poor. You know, as soon as you've got what? A basic education, you already have what? An insight to fight poverty. So far, so good. This, I want young people to develop policies, to be innovators, Pe young people to be innovators, to be strategists, you know, to have very good plans and the likes to fight against these emerging dangerous issues, outbreaks, and some other disasters. I think fighting very hard to achieve that, we will get there, 2030. Yes, lady be blessed. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Hello, am I there? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so very much. People are, I think it's the connection. People are dropping on and dropping off. I'm having to add yeah. people back. The yes, the internet system. But however, I think it has a lot to do with also Zoom being a very heavy um, app on the internet and the network. So I'm looking for different ways to do our live streaming. 
and okay. I'm going to try a different platform next week. Hopefully that will be a little, you don't have to download the app or anything. Yeah. You just click a link that I will send and then it opens your, your webcam and you directly are into the meeting. So oh, we're going to try out different ways to get people on these live stream. But I appreciate your presentation. I think Catherine is the only one that's left. <laughs> She's so devoted. <laughs> She's at every meeting. She, <laughs> yeah, she said, Catherine. hey, I know. So if, there's, if Catherine doesn't have any questions, we can go ahead and wrap it up. So yeah. I can, who is that? Oh, I think she's gone. Did she drop off? Yeah. <laughs> the internet system is really a, a trouble. So it's just you and I. Great presentation. And I'll talk to you some more about it later on. I have to call a ride and then try to get home now. I've been out all day. So definitely um, we're going to wrap it up. Great presentation. You don't want to use the slides. You don't want to share the slides. Yeah, the slides. I use, I use the slides. The slides are I mean, good. share it. Share it on your screen. Okay. okay. Oh, you didn't know how to share them on the screen. That's the challenge I had. <laughs> oh, I got you. You see, you could have taught. Well, no, I couldn't really share them when I'm on my phone. On my laptop, we could share, but we'll talk about that later. I'm going to try this new uh, software and see how it works, if it works better. But other than that, good job. I know it's late there in um, Sierra Leone already. So I thank yeah. you for your presentation and all that you're doing as SDG ambassador. Yeah, you're most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you have a good evening. Bye. Oh, I don't know how to end it now. I don't know how to end it on my phone. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. All right, talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Right. You are welcome. Bye-bye. Yeah.